welcome back guys I'm back with a new project in this video I'll show you how to make your very own laboratory grade variable power supply with current limiting as well as overload protection feature if you are serious about building this project please watch the whole video without skipping any part because this was whole lot of journey for me rather than just a project you'll get to know about the mistakes that I made so that you don't repeat them let's build this project I cut the circuit schematic of this power supply randomly while browsing over the internet. It is just a transistor based linear power supply which gives an output of 0 to 36 volts and 8 amps. Believe me, this specification was enough to attract me whether it was reliable or not. For this project, I ordered this custom made 360 VA transformer which cost me a fortune. I could have used 25 to 30 amps bridge rectifier but to be on the safe side, I used a 50 amp bridge rectifier module and mounted it on a salvaged heatsink. I bought these voltammeters for each output rail from Aliexpress for which I have provided the link in the description. You can buy it from there directly. Finally, the power supply is ready. Since I do not own a ready-made power supply to test this homemade power supply, I'll have to rely on the transformer alone. Need of a power supply to test a power supply. Sounds so paradoxical, right? Mm, never mind. Let's power up the circuit. It's already giving us 50 volts. Let's reduce the voltage. Lesson learned. For a project like this, 
Never rely on the circuit diagram alone, especially if the components are a bit pricey. So, I got this schematic from the description of a DIY variable power supply kit from AliExpress. While going through the description and bias comments, it seemed promising. It uses three identical but separate OP amplifiers TL081 to properly control the output voltage, limiting the current flow, overload protection, as well as short circuit protection feature. This was convincing. This was perfect for me regardless of only 0 to 25 volts and only 3 amps of output on each rail. But for most of the applications, this is more than enough. Since I didn't have a single transformer of 0 to 24 volts AC 3 amps, I combined the outputs of 12 0 12 1.5 amp transformers in parallel. I wouldn't recommend you to do this as there are multiple events that could go wrong if not instantly then on the long term. This was epic improvisation I did during the project. To do this, one must ensure the two transformers be as identical as possible. Firstly, the voltage rating should be exactly the same or else there would be losses. Secondly, the phases of input and output coils should be matched or else BOOM. This 100k preset should be of a multi-turn type. Since I didn't have a single 0.47 ohms resistor, so I connected two resistors 0.25 ohm and 0.22 ohm in series to get a net 0.47 ohm 5 watts. Again improvisation. I also left small air gaps between resistors and PCB to help escape heat in worst conditions.
I also attached a heatsink to transistor D882 to be on the safe side though not required. These are current and voltage potentiometers. This is a 10 amp bridge rectifier that is more than enough and a 4700 microfarad 63 volt filter capacitor. This is the negative and positive outputs of the power supply that will go to the binding post. This is the main power transistor D1047 mounted on the heatsink. This is the output for indicator LED. These are the TL081 OP amp chips. Let's plug them into the circuit. Now connect the voltammeter. Let's test the first channel of the power supply. Slowly increase the voltage. Yeah, it works like a charm. Now as the second channel is completed too, let's test it. Oh yeah, it works perfectly as I wanted. Then I made cabinet for the power supply with a strong half inch thick high density MDF board. I also drilled holes for the ventilation of heat sinks. I then cut the holes for exhaust fan as well as power cord connector. Overall the box is very sturdy. Now let's paint the cabinet. After painting, I also cut holes for power switch, potentiometer knobs as well as binding posts. Then I made a metallic front panel with aluminium sheet and painted it nicely. Then I mounted the transformers firmly into the cabinet. Then I bought a metallic illuminated latching button for power switch from AliExpress. Go to the link in the description for it. I mounted the whole circuitry into the cabinet. Have a look inside. I use this 12 volt brushless CPU fan for exhaust. I bought a good quality 3 pin power cord from a local store. I also bought this power cord connector which has a fuse integrated into it. It also has an auxiliary fuse holder. Pretty cool right? So here are the voltammeters for each power rail.
these are the binding posts for each channel this is the voltage of channel A and current of channel A this is the voltage of channel B and current of channel B this is the power switch now let's power up and test the system before closing the lid Yeah, it works absolutely perfect. The current limiting feature works fine too. The exhaust fan is working cool. Now lastly, I shall check the power supply once again. Perfect. The project is complete and I'm too happy with the results. So that's all for today guys, like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified of my latest videos. If you have any queries or suggestions for my videos, please comment down below.